Okay, so much like uh, the first line is IBM data resilience. Is okay, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Hai. Uh, I would like to say thank you uh, for your time today. Um, after the section from my colleague, Mr. G about the IBM Linux One, I would like to share the IBM data resilient with IBM stories and uh, my session is around uh, 10 slide only 10 slide only it's around 20 to 25 minutes right and this is the uh, part two the part two in my uh, series for IBM uh, data resilient solutions right the part one we did with position on the uh, 9th of September I said two months ago two months ago it's part one uh, I take care for IBM storage consultant and support the partner to deploy the IBM storage solution in Cambodia market, right? In the part one, in the part one, I share with the uh, customer in Cambodia about IBM Plus system data resilient solution, right? Data resilient with IBM Plus system. Would like to take a uh, with a uh, riff about that part one in a few minutes, right? On the screen, you can see the IBM Plus system can give uh, some key feature to protect your data, right? The first one is uh, enhance the high availability. That means the IBM Plus system can give you the uh, synchronize or cluster together, right? And we support multi-platform. Let's say you have uh, two storage system. Uh, maybe uh, IBM and IBM, or maybe different storage vendor like Dell EMC or NetApp, HP, Pew, Lenovo, Oracle, doesn't matter, right? With IBM Plus system on top, we can have to config cluster together, right? We cluster two storage system together. Different vendor is the supported, right? And the second one is the hybrid swap solution. It's another uh, cluster solution uh, for 100 IBM storage system. And if the customer to go with hyper swap, we guarantee 100% data availability guarantee, right? Not 59, not 69, but 100% data guarantee for availability, right? And the third one, we also give the disaster recovery. In case the customer they would like to protect the data from DC to DR or the third side, right? We give the mechanism to replicate from DC to DR and to another side. I mean the third side, right? And our solution also support to the fourth side or fifth side. This means the totally five side in in total can replicate together to protect your data, right? And the next one, uh, we also support the encryption, right? Encryption to protect in case you lost your media or you have uh, attack from hacker, ransomware, malware, and so on, right? We help you to encrypt your data and no performance impact. And the last one, uh, I also mentioned about the very new, very strong uh, key feature a free bundle with every IBM Plus system named Safeguard Copy. It's quite interesting, right? Big Peter can help customer to create the copy from production volume, production lung, right? You can create many copy inside the storage system. And with this copy, the hacker or ransomware cannot attack because um we allow customer to create this copy but they could not modify update or delete this copy this is immutable read only yes even the storage admin he can create this copy but he could not delete this is very strong key feature and free with every ibm plus system and can help the customer to protect your data from ransomware attack especially Let's see the first one, past one, the past one I talked uh, two months ago, right? And this is the slide I would like to summary the 
the strong key feature inside inside IBM Flash system can protect the customer data and I call this is a four level data protection and unique in the world right so the, the level one we protect the customer data inside the disk right this is a only IBM can have in the world right inside every flash core model we have the hardware red hardware red inside the disk only IBM have in the world and the second level we have the traditional uh, software red we read outside the disk together and the third level we can mirror mirror two storage system together and support third party storage system like Dell, EMC, Hitachi and so on right to protect in case you lose or downtime whole storage system your core banking, core finance, core application, core retail automatically immediately seek to read and write and running on the second one still alive right automatically 100% you don't, don't, don't need to do anything manual action and the level 4 we cluster, we support the cluster two storage system at two sides together. It can be running active, active parallel together, right? It can be IBM to IBM, it can be from Dell EMC to HP, from NetApp to Hitachi, and so on, right? With IBM Plus system, we support third party storage system to cluster together. This is a four level data protection unit in the world from IBM to protect the customer data on the online storage system online storage system is a four level I also talked two months ago right this is a bad data protection with the sand storage and the last one I also talked about the step copy right with the production system production system right we support you can create many many the copy here right and this copy is read only. Even the storage admin cannot modify, update, or delete this copy. Cannot, right? So ransomware in case it attacks your production volume, it could not attack this copy. And you can check in case you have ransomware or malware or hacker attack your production volume. You can check this copy and pick up one good copy and restore to production volume if you want. Right, and this feature is built in, in every IBM Plus system. Okay, that is uh, some uh, information I would like to briefly in part one. I shared to Cambodia customer two months ago. So what's today I talking about? Today I talking about the IBM Spectrum Protect. This is a backup solution, the true air gap solution for customer. Let me imagine. Uh, we have the four level data protection. We have uh, safeguard copy to protect the ransomware and malware and hacker attacking. But on of that feature is on send story. It's the online bit system. So how about in case you have the disaster? You have the fighting, you have the plotting, right? whole server room or whole data center you boom it's down you lose everything on online this storage even you have the dc and dr replication together if you have the logic error the replicated data from dc to dr is the same and corrupt together at the same time correct right so some customer they're very happy with the built-in and very strong data protection inside the IPM Plus system, but not enough, not enough. And they require another level, true air gap, true air gap. It means that separately, can say physically separately from production volume on the disk system. Maybe to test, maybe to cloud object storage. Maybe to public cloud like Amazon, Microsoft Azure, IBM Cloud, and so on, right? They're looking for the, the data protection solution like this. And for that requirement, we have the solution we call IBM Spectrum Protect, especially IBM Spectrum Protect Plus. 
IBM Spectrum Protect, we have two versions. The first version is IBM Spectrum Protect for general purpose. Support both virtual machine and physical server and everything. Window, Linux, Unix, right? Mainframe, IBM Mainframe, we support all. And IBM Spectrum Protect, we support backup for Linux One, as my colleagues present before, right? But in the part two today, I would like to introduce to all of you the IBM Spectrum Protect Plus. Very strong, right? Very strong. The solution, a family of IBM Spectrum Protect. In case you need a flexible copy of production data, even on virtual machine, on physical server or container, and backup support for on-prem. Or public cloud, you can check, you can consider IBM Spectrum Protect Plus, right? On the diagram on screen, IBM Spectrum Protect Plus can help the customer to take the snapshot backup to another, the second level data location, like on-prem, private cloud, or public cloud physically separate with the same storage system okay and in case you have the disaster like i shared before you can recover instantly quickly recover from the backup data to your production system okay and with ibm spectrum protect plus this is a truly a gap solution with immutable copy. Immutable, that means you cannot modify, you cannot delete, you cannot update. Just read only. Very safety. Okay? Let me share uh, more information about IBM Spectrum Protect Plus. This is a resilient solution. And you can reuse IBM Spectrum Protect Plus for multi-purpose. The first one, IBM Spectrum Protect Plus, we support to backup for virtual environment like VMware, WishPeer, and Hyper-V, right? And this solution support to run on-prem, which means on your LAN system, on in the cloud, IBM Cloud, Amazon, Microsoft Azure. And this solution is the agent list file system backup. Agent list means you don't need to install any agent on your application server. Right, we support backup for database and application, database like Oracle, SQL Server, DB2, Chain, right, application like uh, another, another, uh, a list, long list. I will talk later on, right? And IBM Spectrum Protect Plus, we also support for container environment. This is new, right? I know a lot of customer. Uh, especially in banking and insurance, right? You are development and you invest for container environment and Kubernetes, right? So, IBM Spectrum Protect Plus, we support for OpenShift, SAP, Scale with the container and KA, right? And we also support for backup cloud applications like Microsoft 365, AdChain, OneDrive, Mailbox, and data right okay and last but not least IBM Spectrum Protect Plus the customer are very happy to use in case they would like to make a copy from primary data to a loss of copy another copy to reuse for to reuse for that depth testing developing depth of system reporting analytics right beside the data protection i said that before right without uh, impact or no need to touch to production volume that is very useful feature from ibm spectrum protect plus i would like to summary uh, six key attribute from spectrum protect plus the lab flap the first one we support uh, the customer to auto discover 
the assets you need to protect, right? The server, database, application, file, container, right? After you set up IBM Spectrum Protect Plus, it can auto discover your system and protect. Scalable, unlimited, the backup data repository, right? With the MongoDB. And with the data after you pick up, when you need to restore, you can search. You can search the data you pick up before, like Google search. Very simple, right? We give you the dialog, right? And you type the name of the system or data you would like to restore, like you search on Google, so that you can find the data very quickly. That is a proactive backup catalog feature. The second one is very simple to manage, easy to deploy. Today, after I finish uh, some my slide, I have the video real demo how to deploy this solution. How to deploy? Right? You can see it deploy in around 10 minutes. 10 minutes for this solution, right? 10 minutes, very quickly, easy to deploy, right? And how to backup Oracle database, how to backup my subsequent server, how to backup uh, Microsoft 365, Xtrain, Mailbox, right? And so on. Today, after I finish my presentation, data protection is fission. Of course, IBM Spectrum Protect Plus will support data reduction to saving your space for backup store with compression and deduplication, yes? And IBM Spectrum Protect Plus interacts closely with IBM Spectrum Protect to upload your data to physical theft if you want. You know, right? Even you have very strong data protection on the this system or NAS system, it's to be online system, right? And you can lose on. You lose everything if you have the Aster, the Aster, finding, flooding, or hacker attack. Okay? So many, many customers, they still want to upload the backup data to physically theft. Offside. You can move to offside. Very safety, very cheap. Traditional solution, but very useful. In this case, you lose on everything in your data center and this Aster recovery center also. The next one, IBM Spectrum Protect Plus support instant data recovery or data access. After you make the backup copy, you can instant access and deploy, map into another server for testing, develop, DevOps, reporting, analytics, training, and so on. Right? No need just to production volume, no impact to your production system. And the next one, very useful, right? Also, of course, we support the integration with the cloud. Yes, many customers in the market today, they regret, they need to back up to storage, need to back up to cloud object storage, right? But also, the request can back up to public cloud like Amazon, Microsoft Azure, or IBM Cloud. Yes, this solution support. You can put the backup data to the public cloud or private cloud if you want. Very easy, right? And the last last one, the cyber resilient, okay? We support to recover in the fence environment as well as VSNAP encryption with IBM Cloud Object Storage. This is a six key attribute of IBM Spectrum Protect Plus. I would like to share with all of you. It is some use case I talked uh, before, right? You can use the backup copy for recovery, for test step, analysis, reporting, batch management, right? After you test, check, with this copy, you can recover to your production. Very safety. And this is the solution diagram this total solution diagram of IBM Spectrum Protect Plus. Many customers, they have two sides, primary data center, and the second side is a secondary data center. 
and maybe they have physical server running database like Oracle database, SQL Server, SAP HANA, DB2, right? This is a traditional server application, right? And maybe they have the virtualized environment, VMware, Hyper-V, Microsoft 365 application on cloud, or some customer they already deploy the container environment as well. Yes, so IBM Spectrum Rotor Plus we support to pick up on this environment a single solution, very simple. Pick up on, we support pick up virtual machine, physical server, and container, and cloud. We support on, right? We su we support to pick up to the disk, physical tab, private cloud. Object storage or public cloud. On environment we support. On environment. And of course, we support to replicate the backup data from primary data center to secondary data center as well. Very strong. Right? And you will see in next my video demonstration today, I focus on the demonstration how we deploy this solution, how we back up Oracle, how we back up Microsoft SQL Server database, right? And another. Uh, before, before we go to the uh, video demonstration, how to deploy the solution and back up uh, the data, I would like to share another interesting solution, the bundle, the promotion from IBM. Uh, from now on, if the customer, they buy IBM Flash System, IBM Flash System 5000, IBM Flash System 5000, we propose IBM Spectrum Protect Plus Backup Solution. I, I said that before, bundle with every IBM Flash System 5000, right? This solution combined together and give the customer best of the best data protection solution from inside IBM Plus system as well as the IBM Spectrum Protect Plus, right? With a price, with a price, I don't say cheap, but very, very interesting. Believe me, right? We have the promotion price. I can say with you, if you buy IBM Plus system 5,000, you can spend under under 10k 10000 USD for this backup solution and we support backup unlimited virtual machine you have does not matter how many virtual machine you have 100 500 1000 10000 virtual machine doesn't matter we support backup unlimited virtual machine and we support with the Backup data repository, unlimited capacity you have with IBM Plus system. Okay, very interesting. The bundle and very good promotion from IBM. We just a few months ago, right? Okay, summary. If you buy IBM Plus system 5000, any model from 5000, you will get IBM Spectrum Protect Plus with the price very, very flexible. Okay, few K only. And you can back up for unlimited virtual machine. On application, on application, you can say, yes, you can say on the screen, IBM Spectrum Protect Plus with IBM Plus system, you can back up for VMware, Hyper-V, Amazon Electric Storage, right? File system, container, Microsoft 365 application, DB2, Chain, MongoDB, Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server. A lot of database and application and container we support your backup with one package from IBM Plus System and Spectrum Protect Plus. Okay, next we will show the video demonstration how to deploy the IBM Spectrum Protect Plus solution and how we backup the Oracle database and 
another application, right? But before we play the video for demonstration, I would like to remind you again. If you would like to look in for and replay the pack one I shared two months ago, you can go to the YouTube. You tell you tell my name, Hai Wing Wang IBM. You will see a lot of my video, right? I share about IBM storage and data protection solution as well as the seminar I talked two months ago. Okay, so. Now we move on the video demonstration how to deploy this solution in 10 minutes and we how we back up the Oracle database sequence server and so on.
Hi, I'm Brian Sietzma and this is the IBM Spectrum Protect Plus video series. This video is focused on Oracle. In this video, I will show you how to protect and recover Oracle databases using IBM Spectrum Protect Plus. Now you might be asking, why would I use Spectrum Protect Plus to back up and restore my Oracle databases? So we put together a list of 10 good reasons. First of all, Spectrum Protect Plus performs agentless, application consistent backups and restores. This way, if your Oracle database were to crash, you'll be able to bring up a restored copy of that database in an application consistent manner. In addition, SPP supports Linux operating systems running on IBM's power architecture technology, as well as multiple channel support. SPP also allows for job level pre and post scripting, granular permission configurations with role based access control, as well as integration with RMAN. SPP has support for Oracle rack configurations as well as ASM and LVM based deployments. In addition, in conjunction with SLA policies and schedules, SPP allows for instant database refreshes and resets, as well as instant restores. And finally, all of this can be done while using IBM Spectrum Protect Plus's self-service portal. After ensuring the requirements are met, you are ready to register your individual Oracle servers in Spectrum Protect Plus. In order to do so, you will expand the application dropdown on the menu on the left-hand side of your screen. Once this expands, you can select Oracle and Backup. Now, click Manage Application Servers and then click the little plus sign to add a new application server. Spectrum Protect Plus supports both standalone and rack configuration. But when using rack configurations, be sure to register each individual node using its IP address, short name, or fully qualified domain name. So you will enter that here where it says host address. Then provide a username and password for that Oracle server, or select a cr credential from the uh, existing user list here. Then click Save. After a successful registration, the new Oracle server will appear in the list of registered servers above. Immediately after registering an Oracle server, this server is automatically cataloged by way of a new job called the Default Application Server Inventory. This inventory job will discover all databases on each server and cluster and runs automatically each morning. Now that we have successfully registered an Oracle server, we might want to troubleshoot or test the registered server to make sure that everything is set up correctly. In order to do so, select the test option from the actions dropdown from that server. This test verifies communication with the server, uh, tests DNS settings between the IBM Spectrum Protect Plus appliance and the server, and also installs the necessary zero touch agent on that server. After completing a test of that Oracle server, you will see that the network configuration has passed the tests, the remote agent has been deployed, and we have passed all Linux prerequisites for this Oracle server. Now we are ready to run a backup. Now that you have registered your Oracle server or servers and the inventory job has discovered the databases on that server, you're ready to set up a backup job. Again, from the menu on the left-hand side, we'll click Application, Oracle, and Backup. Next, select either the Oracle instance you would like to backup, or you can choose to select individual databases by selecting the in instance name and selecting the specific database you would want to be backed up. Once it's selected, you can click Select SLA Policy and select the SLA policy that you would like to manage this backup. If, for example, you wish to enable replication for that Oracle server, simply create an SLA policy with replication configured and select that SLA policy for your backup job. After assigning the Oracle instance or the database to an SLA policy, this backup job will run automatically based on that SLA policy. So you'll notice that I've added this PDB database to the gold SLA policy. This means it will run and it will take a snapshot every two hours. However, you can manually kick off this backup by clicking the actions drop down next to the appropriate SLA policy and clicking start. 
You can also manually start this backup job from the job monitor screen under system, job monitor. Here, you will find the specific job you want to run, and again, in the dropdown, select actions and start. After allowing that gold SLA policy to run to completion, you'll notice that we have successfully backed up that database. Now that we have that successful Oracle backup, we can perform an Oracle database restore. In order to do this, we'll navigate to again to the, nap, the application tab, Oracle, and now restore. From here, we can select the specific Oracle server that we would like to restore and then the database that we would like to, to restore. In addition to this, we can actually expand this restore points. We'll give this a second. This will actually pull up each individual snapshot that we have taken of that specific database. So if I wanted to go back to April 12th at one o'clock and use this as a restore, uh, I can just select, or I can click this little arrow and it will be added to the restore list. After adding the desired recovery point to the restore list, we can set specific options for this restore job. We'll click options. Here you can choose to use the original name and location for this database, or you can provide an alternate name and an alternate location for the recovered database. This is also where you choose the specific restore type you would like to use. There are two main restore types, test and production. A test restore restores the database in no archive log mode, and the restore job will sit in a resource active state until you choose to clean up. A production restore, on the other hand, actually restores a database into production. There is no resource active state as the NFS share is unmounted upon creation. A third restore type is called instant access. This instant access restore allows the user to manually browse the contents of the NFS share and use custom RMAN commands. Like a test restore, this will sit in a resource active state until the user chooses to manually or automatically clean up the job. Once you've selected the restore type and for this restore we'll use test, we can go into uh, the advanced options. Here, we can choose to overwrite the existing database, we can set initialization parameters, uh, among other specific options. We can also set up pre and post scripts for this recovery job. Once we've finalized the specific settings that we would like to use for this restore job, we can click save. Now there are two different ways we can finalize this restore job. Say we wanted to set this restore as an automated or scheduled job. We wanted to run this on a schedule. We can click this Manage Jobs tab, click the plus sign here, and let's give this job a name. Let's say Oracle. Next, we'll set a frequency. How often do we want this recovery job to run? Say I wanted to run this every two days at 12 noon. I can select a two-day frequency and set the time to 12 noon, and then I can click Save. Now, if, for example, I didn't want to have this uh, as an automated job and I just wanted to kick this off manually, I could simply cl click the restore button. This will set off an on-demand job that will run immediately. After successfully completing a database restore, you will see your job sitting in a resource active state. Now you can leave your Oracle database sitting in a resource active state while you complete your testing. After completing that testing, we will clean up that database, that mounted resource, by clicking the Actions tab down below and selecting Cancel Restore. This will shut down and remove the test database. It will unmount the clone volume from the Oracle server and delete the clone volume from the vSnap. Once that cleanup completes, your restored job status will change back to completed. And that is how we will complete an Oracle backup and restore using IBM Spectrum Protect Plus. Hi, this is Ben Jones with the IBM Spectrum Protect Plus team. And today we're going to be taking a look at SQL registration and backup in IBM Spectrum Protect Plus. So first thing we're going to do is go ahead and log into our IBM Spectrum Protect Plus appliance. Entering a username and password, just click sign in there. 
And the first step to backing up or protecting SQL with IBM Spectrum Protect Plus is to go ahead and register our application servers. So where we do that is under this Manage Protection group. We'll go ahead and click on the Applications dropdown. And then you'll see here, uh, down here is SQL. There's two options, Backup and Restore. And the first place we want to go is Backup. That's going to have a section that's going to allow us to register our application servers. So you'll see up here at the top is this Manage Application Servers group. We'll go ahead and click on that. And we'll see any of the application servers that we've already registered uh, down here. There's a button here we can click to edit those servers if something changes, the, uh, the host name changes or the IP address changes or something like that. We can edit any, anything that already exists there. If we want to add a new one, we'll just go ahead and click on this Add Application Server button. And here it's uh, very simple. You just enter a host name or IP address here. Uh, and then we'll enter our username and password for that application server here. That user needs a local administrator on the server itself in Windows, and then it needs permission to the SQL instance that we plan to uh, back up or restore using um, IBM Spectrum Protect Plus. We can also click this checkbox here if we already have a user that will work on this application server. Say we're using a shared user across multiple servers, we can go ahead and click on that and select a user that's already in the system. IBM Spectrum Protect Plus supports uh, SQL servers in standalone, cluster, or always-on configurations. If we're registering a cluster, we need to make sure that we register all of the servers that are part of that cluster, or nodes that are part of that cluster, uh, to make that work. So once we've added our servers, uh, we click on Save here to add them uh, once all these fields are filled out. Uh, we can go ahead and start using them in Spectrum Protect Plus. So the first step here is to inventory those servers. When you add a new server, the inventory runs automatically, and that server is added to an inventory job that runs automatically on a nightly basis. If you ever need to run the inventory on a specific server manually, you can go ahead and click on this Actions button here and then click on inventory and that's going to go ahead and run the inventory sort of in an ad hoc manner so that uh, if you add a database at some point you want to discover it immediately in SPP you can do that rather than waiting for the nightly inventory job to run. There's also this test button here and what that allows us to do is go ahead and run some tests against the SQL server so that we can ensure that when we do go to run the backup job that everything's going to work properly. Uh, this test takes a couple minutes to run, so we won't wait for it to finish, but that's available there as well. So once you've added your application servers to SPP, we can go ahead and start backing them up using our SLA policies. So you'll see here under SQL Backup, we have any of the instances uh, that we've registered and have discovered using the inventory job in SPP. We can go ahead and also search for resources here as well. So if we're searching for a specific database in one of our instances or a specific instance, we can do that here using the search box. We can also filter over here. Um, so right now the standard view is standalone and failover cluster. If we wanted to view our always on groups, we could do that here as well. There's also another button here uh, to run inventory for all of our uh, discovered nodes as well. Uh, if we just wanted to run it for everything and not just one uh, application server, we can click that button to do that. So in terms of assigning resources to SLA policies, uh, we can do that on the instance level or we can do it on the database level. Again, we can search for specific resources here or we can just browse uh, using the um, hyperlinks here. So we're viewing an instance here. If we wanted to select a specific database in that instance, we can go ahead and click that. That's going to bring up our list of databases that are part of this instance. It'll show an SLA policy in this column if uh, one of the databases are, has already been assigned. We also see here a flag indicating whether or not that database is eligible for log backup. So if we go ahead and check off one of our databases here, we can check off as many as we want. Um, if we wanted to assign multiple databases to a single SLA or multiple SLAs, we could do that. And then we'll go ahead and click on this Select SLA Policy. SLA policies are basically templates for how we're backing resources up. So they define a frequency and retention. So how often are we backing that resource up and how long are we keeping those backups for? There's also different workflows associated with SLA policies. So 
back up to our primary vSnap storage, back up uh, to a replica site vSnap, so replication, uh, in addition to offload to the cloud, for instance. Uh, those are all defined as part of those SLA policies. So we can check off uh, one SLA policy or many SLA policies here for our assignment. And once we're done with that, we can go ahead and click Save here to save that SLA policy assignment. There's also different options for backing up uh, your SQL servers. Uh, you can enable log backup here, so we can check that off and define a sec separate frequency for how often we're backing up those transaction logs that are part of that database. We can also define whether or not we want to back up all of our database files in parallel or do them in serial one at a time here, as well as defining how many parallel streams per database we want to process at once. So that covers backing up uh, SQL. We'll cover restore in another video. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Hi, welcome to this backup and restore video showing how Spectrum Protect Plus now supports Microsoft Office 365 Exchange. This support was added in version 10.1.5 and it provides incremental forever backup based upon the Microsoft Delta queries. And we store those backups inside of the Spectrum Protect Plus environment and manage those backups via our SLAs. Now the scheduled and on-demand backup and restores can support all of the elements of Office 365, including mailboxes, contacts, calendars, and OneDrive. And when we go to do a restore, you can specify a specific version or a given point in time, and you can either restore to the original account or to another account. Now I do have another video out there of installing Office 365 with Spectrum Protect Plus and of setting up the SLAs. So in this video, we're gonna show how to do an on-demand backup and some different types of restores. So let's go ahead and get started. First, let's show an on-demand backup of an individual feature. So we'll go into the Office 365 and we'll scroll down and choose the specific tenant and then one of the users underneath that and then a specific feature. This time we'll go ahead and do a on-demand of the mailbox and then we'll click on Run and OK. If you go out into the home and then into the jobs, you'll see that that on-demand backup has kicked off. We'll go ahead and let that run. Okay, the on-demand backup has completed. And here in the summary, you can see that it did successfully backup all of those individual mailbox items. So we did that on-demand backup just for one feature. You could have chosen multiple features or multiple users to do that backup against. Let's go into Office 365 and go into OneDrive and let's go ahead and delete off all of these files that are currently in this box so that we can show a restore. And then we will also remove those files from the recycle bin. To kick off the on-demand restore, go into Spectrum Protect Plus, go into Office 365, click on Create Job. You're going to choose a snapshot restore. You're going to choose the name of the tenant and then the name of the user. We're going to choose Robert. And then we're going to choose the feature. In this case, we're going to choose the OneDrive. Now notice you could choose as many as you wanted by simply clicking the plus and then clicking the minus if you didn't want them. Um, so we're selecting OneDrive and you'll see once we click the plus sign, it appears on the right hand side. Next, you're going to do a type of restore is going to be on demand. We're going to choose the point in time we want to restore. And we'll go ahead and click next. We want to restore to the original location with one job session. Here's the summary and we're going to go ahead and kick off the restore. We can go ahead and see that job out there by going into the dashboard and looking at jobs. And we'll go ahead and wait for that restore to complete. 
If we switch over to Office 365, you can actually see the files being restored. So here inside of the OneDrive, the files are being brought back to their original location. Back in Spectrum Protect Plus, we can see that that restore job has completed. So now we're going to go ahead and go back into Office 365. We're going to create another restore job. We're going to select the tenant, and this time we're going to also select Robert. And we're going to choose Robert's mailbox. Type of restore is once again going to be on demand. We'll choose the most recent backup, but we're going to now restore to another location. And this tenant is also going to be in company one, but it's going to be in this other user's mailbox. Perhaps Robert left the company and we want to restore his emails to his replacement, Pradeep. We'll specify a restore path that will show up underneath Pradeep's mailbox. We'll pick the number of parallel sessions and then we'll go ahead and submit this job. If you go into the home screen and underneath jobs, once again, you'll see that this job has kicked off. Okay, the restore has completed. So if we scroll down, we can see the statistics regarding the restore. Switching back to Office 365, if we go into Pradeep's mail folder, you'll see there's now a folder called Robert Data that we did the restore to, and it's underneath his other directories there. And we can see the files that were originally Robert's emails have now been restored to Pradeep. Another interesting restore case, if you go to Spectrum Protect Plus, Office 365, Snapshot Restore, and you check a specific tenant, you can go through and you can choose individual users. And underneath those individual users, you can select a specific feature from that individual user and add it to the restore list. And your restore list can end up having different features from different users in it. And that will then be restored to a specific location. So in summary, Spectrum Protect Plus's Microsoft Office 365 support gives you the ability to backup and restore Office 365 elements, including mailbox, contacts, calendars, and OneDrive. It allows you to choose which version or point in time to restore and to either the original location or to a separate account. Thank you very much. IBM Spectrum Protect Plus now offers native container support. This is for backup, recovery, and retention for Kubernetes and shortly OpenShift environments. We integrate with containers, providing the developers of the container applications a native interface. And the way we do this is we offer a SPP SASE container that we install into the container's environment, which allows us to do CSI snapshots in place of the persistent volumes that are critical to the application developer. We can then take copies of these snapshots and send them to IBM Spectrum Protect Plus for longer retention. In addition, we provide out-of-the-box service level agreements, which helps us with the scheduling and governance of these snapshots and long-term retention copies. When we look at what we are providing for this functionality, we are really trying to address who will be using this. And the first person is Jane. She is one of our container developers, and her world revolves around working in the container environment with things like kubectl and YAML files. And her primary wish for Spectrum Protect Plus is to provide protection for the persistent data volumes she's using when developing her container applications. Her colleague, Jose, is a backup admin for Spectrum Protect Plus. Spectrum Protect Plus is a data protection solution which offers protection for modern workloads like applications, hypervisors, and now containers. Jose works inside of the Spectrum Protect Plus user interface. And when it comes to containers, one of the things he's interested in is the governance of these containers. 
And we provide out of the box service level agreements that include a daily, weekly, and monthly. And this not only tells us how often the data will be backed up, but for how long it'll be kept, and most important to Jose, where it'll be kept inside of the Spectrum Protect Plus environment. Jose can also monitor the status of the container backups and restores from inside of the Spectrum Protect Plus user interface. And starting in the first half of next year, he'll also be able to kick off container backups and restores. The person who knows best which persistent data volumes need to be protected is going to be the application developer. And she works in the Linux command line. And she wants to be able to use the tools she's familiar with, like kubectl and YAML files, in order to do the data protection and restore of these persistent volumes. So Spectrum Protect Plus, for instance, provides this YAML file where she can go in and enter the name of the PVC that she wants to protect, and then also enter the SLA that Spectrum Protect Plus provides so that this persistent volume will be backed up. So if she entered daily, every four hours, an in-place CSI snapshot will be created. And then once a day, we'll take a copy of that and send it outside of the fault domain to Spectrum Protect Plus, where it will be retained for 31 days. So after she saves this YAML file, she'll simply use this cube CTL apply command. And now her PVC is going to be protected on a scheduled basis. If she wanted to see which backups were scheduled, she can do this cube CTL git request, and it will show the different backups, both the on-demand and the scheduled backups that are already running in her environment. If she chooses to do an on-demand backup, she can go into this other YAML file, and here she'll specify the name of the on-demand job, and then she'll specify the namespace that that PVC is located in, and this time, the request type will be on-demand backup. And this is going to create a one-time in-place CSI snapshot for the PVC she lists. So again, she'll apply this YAML file using the kubectl apply-f, and then the name of that YAML file she just edited. And now she will have created a one-time snapshot. If she wanted to restore one of these PVCs, Perhaps she wants to reuse the backup and spin up a test environment. She can use this kubectl describe command, and she'll see not only the on-demand snapshots, but she'll see also the scheduled snapshots and the copies that were sent to Spectrum Protect Plus. And so she can simply choose the timestamp for what she wants to restore. She'll copy that, and then she'll go in and edit this YAML file, which is going to be her restore YAML file. And in this restore YAML file, she is going to specify first off the name of the, the restore job. The request type is restore, the PVC that she wants to restore, and then the target she wants to restore to. She'll then plug in that restore point she just copied. She'll save this YAML file. And then she'll use the kubectl apply command in order to kick off that restore. So Spectrum Protect Plus now provides native container support. This includes the ability to do scheduled backups, on-demand backups, and restores. We provide the support to the interfaces for the end users who will be using it. So for our backup admin, that would be inside of the Spectrum Protect Plus user interface. And for our application developers like Jane, we will provide tools that she's familiar with, like kubectl and YAML files, so that she can request the protection of her critical PVCs directly in the Linux command line. Thank you very much.